to these positions of authority and be immune to the suffering and pain around them. Now, this is not a this is not an easy conversation back in England. It's not an easy conversation to 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 have people face up to the, the hidden purpose of that system, that education system. But this man had been through that, went through this system, and he talked like this, you know. Good <laughs> <laughs> Charles, totally good chair. <laughs> Everything that for, my, for someone like me was, you want to kill. <laughs> And on the other part, you, you, you felt so intimidated, you want to disappear. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can never resist. <laughs> still, there's still something there. There's still some button there. <laughs> but the thing about it was, he starts to tell his story, you know? and as he's telling about what it was like to be pulled from his family and what it did, the abuse he was he starts to cry. Mm. Now I had been in a, I had been to a boys' Catholic boarding school in Ireland, and again, it's changed a lot. And you're probably familiar with what's what's happening now in Ireland. The whole abuse of the children that went down in schools is being exposed. The whole community's turmoil. And I think back, and it's hard to believe this, but that even at the time I was in school, all the teachers had uh, a leather strap with a piece of lead inside it. It was just that was just the norm, you know. Roll doll stories. Which yeah, roll doll? doll stories. <laughs> yes. yeah. And very funny, you know, violent place. And so as he's telling stories, like it's dark, you know, I'm, I'm I'm resonating, you know, it's like uh, it's, I can identify with that. And then what? Yeah. Mm. Then it's like here you are, and it's a moment of choice. And you know, it's not like again you thought about this, you've been prepared for this. Now you're there. And one choice you see is, well, if, you know, if those those are the bastards who, you know, took our country and took our lives and on and on. Very reason. So you don't want to be touched by them. So one choice is to keep the other as the enemy is you close down part of your own emotional life. You have to kill off your own emotional being. Because the other option is if you are allow yourself to be touched by that other, which I was, then you're all other dilemma. Because then it's like your own sense of identity and group and tribe is disturbed. And you're out there and you there's a period, at least a period, where you're alone. Right? It's not like anyone's talked to you about this, you know. You you're there in that moment. And your group doesn't want you out there. <laughs> you know? It's not uh, you go back and you start you know, saying, maybe we should rethink this. That's not a welcome message. <laughs> so, that, so, so the group will <laughs> are set up to suck you back in there. So, I, so, so taking children out of this situation, having them mix, and then think you're going to go back in there and suck them in, doesn't take that into account. I like to use the metaphor of um, beef stew. You know what goes into beef, a good beef stew? I mean, like what? What would you put in a good beef stew? Turnips. Turnips, absolutely. Which one? Rutabagas. Rutabagas. Carrots. Carrots. Cabbage. Cabbage. Potatoes. Cabbage, potatoes, absolutely. Beets. 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 Onions, right? Tomatoes. So you, 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 and you turn up the heat. If it's too much heat, then it turns to mush. If you don't have enough heat, everything just stays disconnected. So, the problem is, you see, if I'm a, if I'm a, a lentil, <laughs> if I'm a lentil, and I go over here, 
to talk to the onions. <laughs> right? And we figure out what the onions want. How do they see life? Right? <laughs> and then I come back over here to the lentils. I'm going to try to tell, explain to the lentils what the onions are thinking about. Well, they're going... <laughs> <laughs> you know? We didn't send you, didn't, we didn't send you over there to be onionized. <laughs> You're a lentil. <clears throat> come back. So it's very challenging for people to step out of their own group to, to engage with the other. There's a, a Turkish secret uh, psychiatrist who, who writes about this. He says, he says the book, we, why we need enemies and allies. He, his argument is we need the enemy. In Northern Ireland, we need the, you know, the Irish, we need the British to be the enemy because it, it keeps intact who we are as Irish. Right? That's the irony of this. And the, and the, way, to, the, the way to get out, the way to escape that trap, that, that prison of identity, is to actually engage with the other. But that's very risky. So I want to offer that, that, that identity presents paradox. It's a profound paradox. That, and, and, and if I can frame it like this, it's the very thing that people feel they need to hold on to in terms of identity is the very thing that keeps the conflict in place. So what is it that people are holding on to? Now I'm suggesting it's not the identity per se. It's, like, it's not like that being Irish is, you've got to give that up. The wonderful things about being Irish or being English or whatever. The difficult thing to give up is the attachment of that identity in order to have a sense of self. And particularly to have a sense of self that's, that's us, not them. So, you know, it's profoundly challenging to begin to muddy that water, muddy that. Uh, I know we have a couple of people here in Peace Corps in uh, Armenia. Armenia had the opportunity uh, about a month ago to work with seven uh, Turks and seven Armenians. Some of them were from the diaspora and some were from the actual Armenian Turk. <coughs> And it was, you know, uh, at one point, you know, here you have a community in, in the Armenians who believed that in, in, in 1915, as many as one and a half million other people were slaughtered, you know, or, or died, or, you know, murdered or killed off in a genocide. And I've been trying since then to get the world take on, but to get the Turkish people to acknowledge that happened. In this group of seven Turks, there was only one who could use the word genocide. A young woman who had worked through the research and she had, she had come to the conclusion, yeah, it happened, we did it. The others, someone would use, the, they would, when they, to, to, to refer to it, they would say the G word. Or some would say the terrible events of 1915. So, and it was also interesting that this young woman who was willing to say genocide, there was still a limit. She said, but it wasn't like the Germans with the Jews. He said, well, why not? It wasn't racist. <laughs> How come? And she really didn't have an explanation. And what you, what you, what's apparent to see is that for her, and what she represents in her community, Somehow, if they acknowledge genocide, their fear is that they'll be seen as Nazis. Mm -hmm. And somehow that's unbearable. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's unthinkable. So there you have what's in a church of an adaptive challenge. How is that community? Who's going to exert the leadership in that community that will allow church people to, you know, maybe take that risk? 
experience, what's the 